In this video, I will be doing the following derivation using all available rules of sentential logic. Now, when I do all rules, it actually lets me get around some sort of uh, uh, typically harder thinking. So things like breaking down show lines and contradiction generators and lots of these things sort of disappear when I actually have all my rules available because I can just sort of open things up using brute force, which I'll demonstrate here. Now, that's not to say you can totally forget about breaking down show lines. It's still helpful to do, and it's still helpful to spot contradiction generators. It just turns out you don't need to. So if you're able to integrate all your basic rule skills with all rules, you'll just become very good at derivations. So, I always start off by writing my show. Show not bracket P or Q arrow S. Now, the typical way to break this down, which I'll do over here on the side, would be to realize that this is just a conditional. It's just phi arrow psi, and then I would assume phi, and then I would show psi, and I would assume not psi. And this is an AID, and this is an ACD. And of course I could do that here, and then my available lines would be not P or Q, and then the other available line would be not S. Now if you want, you can just sort of do it on your own uh, as an exercise. But what I'm going to show you is that if I can actually just go straight to assume ID here because I have all my rules available. And um, some students will like this, some won't, but it doesn't matter. You can do it either way you want. Uh, I'm just sort of demonstrating uh, so you can see what I mean. Now, once I... that's not right. That's assume ID. So, once I have this down, I can immediately negation of conditional this. Why? Because the main connect is a negation, and it's modifying a conditional. So negation of conditional says I affirm the antecedent, and I negate the consequent. And that is 2 and C. And now I can simplify this into not P or Q, and not S. 3 simplify, 3 simplify. And you should see here that these lines are the same. This matches up over here with what it would have been line by line 2, and this matches up over here with what would have been li line 4. So, why do it this way? Well, I'm just sort of showing you that it doesn't matter. You can do whatever way you want. Now, on line 6, I'm going to continue doing automatic moves. Now that I've broken down my show line, line 4 is the negation of a disjunction, so I can immediately dis de Morgan's it into not P and not Q and that's four De Morgans. Remember, De Morgans is distribute the negative and then flip the sign. And on line seven and eight, I might as well just simplify those. Uh, it never hurts, and that's line six simplify, six simplify. So in the end, I look at this big mess, and I actually just have three important lines. Uh, five, seven, and eight. Those are actually quite handy for me to sort of build and do things with. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. My first premise, uh, I'm looking for automatic moves here, is not z by conditional q. Well, uh, now that I have derived rules, I can immediately uh, write out z by conditional not q. And that is premise 1, negation of by conditional. Uh, okay, I'll keep going. That sort of takes care of that. Well, I have a not q right here, so I can split this up into not q arrow z. Uh, and quickly do a modus ponens, so that's going to be 9 by conditional conditional. And on line 11, I will modus ponens this with the not Q from here, and I get Z. So that is 8, 10 modus ponens. So that's nice. Z is a new, handy, available line for me to uh, sort of work with. Um, okay, what else can I do? Well, this thing here is a big fat conditional. I'm looking to modus ponens or modus tollens it, but I don't have the antecedent or the negation of the consequent. This one is also uh, a conditional, same story. Over here, I just have not t, which, I don't know, may be useful, but it doesn't seem sort of automatic yet. So at this point, I need to get unstuck. There's no more automatic moves that sort of uh, um, will open up the derivation anymore to me. I, I have to sort of think of something to show. Now, I could invoke structure, but if I look at my show line, I'm already doing some conditional derivation, if I did it this way, or I already clearly broke everything down here. So I don't actually have any structure to guide me. It's not like this is showing a conjunction where I would know to show both sides, or a disjunction where I know to show just one side, and so on. So structure guidance is out the window. 
So now we need to look at our sort of last option, uh, which is to sort of find something useful. Now remember, contradiction generators, they're out the window. We don't actually need to use those when I'm doing derived rules. So instead, I actually need to find something that will help me break down my more complicated lines. And my more complicated lines are over here. Now I basically have four options. I could build the antecedent, or I could build the negation of the consequent. And again, I could build the antecedent, or I could build the negation of the consequent. And if I had the antecedents, so if I went for the yellow root to build an antecedent, uh, I would then be able to modus ponens. If I had the negation of the consequent, I would then be able to modus tollens. So here, I just basically need to decide which is the most likely thing that I will be able to build. Well, I just look around. Can I build x arrow not w? Well, I don't know. I have lots of things here with not s, not p, not q, z, not t. Eh, that's okay. Can I build this thing? Yeah, maybe. Can I build this? And so on. And I just have to ask. Well, it turns out it really doesn't matter. You just need to pick something that you're likely to be able to build. Uh, I'm going to choose this one. Now, if you want to, you can actually try this derivation uh, over and over again, um, trying to show other things. And it's, uh, it's, it's really not that difficult. Okay, so here we go. So on line 12, I'm going to show uh, not bracket z arrow p. On line 13, I assume id and I get z arrow p. That's assume id. On line 14, I use the z's to modus ponens and I get p, and that's 11, 13 modus ponens. And on line 15, I actually remember from up here I have not p, and that is 7 repeat 14 id. So that was actually quite easy. Now the point of doing this was so I can modus ponens this premise and now I have not bracket w and x and that is line 12 premise 3 modus ponens and I'm ready to continue. So on line 17 I can De Morgan's this immediately. That's an automatic move. And that is 16 De Morgan's. Okay, so now I'm hunting around. I have this not W or not X, uh, but I still just have, you know, S, P, Q, Z. It doesn't really look like I can combine anything. So again, maybe it sort of looks like I'm stuck. Uh, not the end of the world. I now have to tackle this premise over here. Again, I could show the antecedent or I could show the negation of the consequent. Uh, it turns out that both are equally easy. I've been showing a lot of antecedents in my video, so maybe I'll show the negation of the consequent. So on 18, what I'm going to show is the negation of this. And just to make it simple, I will actually just show uh, r arrow not t. Now, from here, I could do a brute force assume ID, but I'm not going to bother. Uh, I'll just do um, a standard conditional derivation breakdown. So I go R, assume CD. Then on 20, I'll say, oh, well, I'm really trying to show not T. Uh, well, actually, I'll skip that, just to save some lines. I know I need to show not T, but I have not T from premise 4. So I'll just say not T, that's premise 4, conditional derivation, done. Now, the point of doing this is that I can modus tollens premise 2. But of course, I'll need to remember to add the double negation. So that is 18 double negate premise 2 modus tollens. When I do a modus tollens, I get the negation of the antecedent. So I get not bracket x arrow not w. And this is the negation of the conditional. So I use the NC rule, which is x and not w. And that's 21 and c. Okay, so now it looks like I've actually used pretty much everything I can. I just need to find the contradiction. And if I look, I remember I have not used line 17, and I have this simplification waiting to go. So I'll just simplify that. That's x, that's not w. Those are both 22 simplify, 22 simplify. And now I see, hey, I can actually uh, MTP. Oh, I made a mistake. This negation of conditional should have generated not not w. And then that would give me w here after I did a simplify and a double negate. Sorry about that. 
Okay, so now on line 25, it's pretty clear what I need to do. I need to MTP this thing because it's the only thing I can do to a disjunction. So I'm going to take one of them, x or w. Uh, well, too bad I double negated it. Uh, no big deal. I'll take my x and I'll double negate it and MTP. So I'm taking line 23, double negate, 17 MTP. And that will give me not w. And of course, this is my contradiction here, 24. 25 I D. That closes my last show, which is the first one. So this all rules derivation. It's not so bad. Uh, the point is, you get stuck. It's inevitable. You will get stuck after line 11. And you need to figure out how to get unstuck. And what you do is you show things that would be useful to have. Antecedents are useful to have. Negation of consequence are useful to have. If this was a disjunction, the negation of one of the disjuncts would be useful to have, because then I could MTP, and so on. That will guide you in terms of how to solve the proof, and you're looking to use everything you can to generate a contradiction. With the derived rules, everything essentially just breaks down into a bunch of atomics, so you just have to sort of keep a mental note about what you have. You can make a little list on the side, and then look for the contradictions. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Good luck.